This video feedback covers the design that Kathy digitised using Hatch version 1. And here's a photograph of her stitch out. And this is the lovely bold design that she created. And that is based on this piece of artwork, an abstract flower. Now, as a pathing challenge, this graphic certainly measures up because you have to make an awful lot of decisions and it's evident from the way in which you've created your design that you understand what you're doing when you analyse the graphic and I was really really impressed with your process overall. You analysed the graphic, you separated it out into sections and you made decisions. You actually did the design in three sections. First of all you did this part here, then you did these leaves where you showed that you'd unscrambled all those tendrils and then the third section to stitch out that you worked on was this full-on daisy here. Also it's been a delight to see the photographs that you sent in and these actually support and show just how you go about doing your analysis and your planning. The colouring in and the colours that you've chosen and you can see how you've been working out where all the objects are and from that you can actually then work out which ones you want to stitch out first, which ones come second and all these here I can actually see where you've plotted your travel lines done in the different colours. So methodical, so clear and so helpful. Got the numbers here in terms of the order in which you stitch things out. The next photograph, these are the leaves that you unscrambled one, each of the different sections where you've done them, numbering the order in which they will be stitched out. Terrific. And then as you've actually worked through your design, you've stitched out and I think one of the things that you mentioned in your note was that you stitched it out and you saw that there were these gaps. So you went back to the drawing board and you did some sampling and you did some test stitching, tried out some different adjustments and then you looked at it and said what happened, why, what's going on there, aha I think this may be some pull compensation which you adjusted and you tried that and decided you know what that doesn't quite work so then you decided it might be some overlaps and in the end you redigitized part of it bearing in mind what you'd learned from what you'd seen already. Absolutely terrific process. And along with the photos in your note you explain even more of your process in that you've reviewed what you did with the digitizing, you've considered all the points that you've learned. I love this part. I love, nudge, uh, I love node nudging. Hard to say that, but I found out the nodes are sometimes rebellious. Don't we know it? Anyway, I don't intend to cover all the points that you've covered in this excellent personal review of your process and of the design that you did. What I have done is added one or two comments to this and you can read that by going to the site where I've uploaded it under files, in the challenge folder, under October 2018 and it's actually here, Kathy's challenge documents with some feedback in addition to what's in the video. However, what I will cover are two points that you raise in here. One was your point about you chose to use some longer stitches in tatami to give a smoother, shinier look. And the other one, if you will, were the push-pull issues that you feel that you need to uh, pay a bit more attention to. Because those two combined together, I think, are a large part of a couple of the issues that you experienced with your design. And for those of you that are interested in trying Kathy's method of mapping out a design in order to create your digitizing plan then you can go to the website and under files how to pdfs and information you'll find two documents one is a pathing process guide and the other one is cost of fear mapping steps it's just a step by step process that you can go through both those documents are in page form on the wiki pages I'll scroll down this fairly slowly so that I don't send you dizzy. That's that content and cost of fear. You colour in, 
you mark all the stitch types that you want to use on the different objects you then decide what your stitch angles will be on each of the objects next step is to decide what direction do you want the object to fill in what flow do you want when you know that you then decide where your entry and exit points will be on each object you take a step back you consider the whole design you decide which pieces will be passed to control registration which parts you want to be passed by color and then you sequence the order after that you can plot and mark out the route of your travel lines from the exit point of one object to the entry of the next cost fear and this is the sort of thing that you get it's great love it not everybody will want to digitize this way but for those that do it can be a very very efficient way of coming up with a digitizing plan and here's how that plan came together passed by cover more satin stitch with a stitch angle that goes across each individual piece tatami with florentine effects for the calyx and satin stitch for the stems the tendril leaves which are made up of um, digitized closed shapes and also using the turning angle tool and there's carving in there all with satin stitch having moved through the design now we're moving on to the background part of the open daisy and you chose to move outside in and these are all the petals which you used the technique that was shown by Carol using the radial fill and satin stitch it looks so clever and then here we have as you're moving into the center the background to the inner petals followed by more petals using that same radial fill technique with the satin stitch and finally you filled in the center with a satin stitch disc on top of which you placed five little motif stamps of what looked like the colonial knots and it looks great but as we know what we see on the screen isn't always what we get when we stitch out and from your notes you were clearly unhappy with some of the things that set out and you did try to resolve them you correctly identified the issue as one that was to do with push and pull but you were also dissatisfied with the results of your attempts to correct it so just that I could understand fully what was going on with your design I stitched out a copy and this is my stitch out and unfortunately I do have to apologize for the quality of the photograph my flash has washed it out but I also get this gapping here that you did now I hope that you have still got your stitch out because I want you to get it out and I want you to feel it and I want you to feel this area here I'm fairly certain you're going to have a lovely little dip here either a dip or a mound and it's going to be about the size of your thumbprint you'll have another little bit of a dip here and I want you to notice that it will be a little bit of pinching up around this area there's pinching here and what I mean by pinching is is where the satin stitch going backwards and forwards going across here has got narrow and narrow and narrow and it pinches it into a little tunnel of fabric I want you to have a look at that and then I also want you to feel this area here now I don't know whether it did on yours but I looked at mine 24 hours after it came out of the hoop and I had this lovely lovely bit of fluting here you can't see it very well on the photograph and that looks like it's distortion pulling in it isn't it's the fabric rising up and it rises up almost a full centimeter from the table because there are so many stitches in here there's nowhere for them to go so it's buckled the fabric this is buckled here in that we've got so many stitches in there but it isn't just that the densities are quite high it's also that these have stitched coming in this way each of them so the flow of the stitching is down this way and then when this part is stitched out it's actually stitched going back to it so this has pushed tiny little bits of fabric in this direction this one is pushing them in this direction and there's nowhere for all these stitches to go so it goes into a little bump so when we're actually working out our digitizing plan and we're looking at the pathing it's not just about pathing from one object to another it's also about how we move through those particular objects so that we don't set ourselves up for problems in other areas and where we're talking about this fill flow this is the thing that we mean we have an object here let's press H 
and that is the reshape button but it allows us to see the angle here and this has an angle of 5 the start point is at the bottom the end point is at the top and that tells me that the flow of this when this cover stitching goes in will go from bottom to top here is the same 5 degree angle on the same shape however the flow on this one is top to bottom let's put it through the player and just watch how it pushes the empty space up to the top this one pushes the empty space down to the bottom if I want to move the stitch angle of something for example oops, I want to move this one and say I don't want it to go top to bottom I need it to go in a different direction I can move my stitch angle here and in this case I might decide you know this one's going to fill from right to left if I move the stitch angle this way I may say you know what it's not really looking that great mm, I want to do this actually you know I'm gonna do this instead I want I need it to finish on this side here and I'm gonna take it over here and this is what happens when we start messing with stitch angles we end up having to alter our flow of the stitching and whilst it might look more attractive visually we then have to think about how we cope with the problems of this coming out here and how it affects the object that then is going to be next to it so let's look at the flow now of that particular one left to right top to bottom sometimes we don't have any choice we have to have everything going in the direction without uh, things going one against another so for example on this one here the flow is going top to bottom same in this one same in this one so pushing all the snow in this direction if we then make the decision that this will fill from here then we will end up getting our bump in the middle and we can actually watch this happening top to bottom pushing the empty space filling the gap and if this is a large piece with lots and lots of stitches in it there's nowhere for the stitches to go something that we can do if I press this stop first is we can change the flow from top to bottom and that should be able to help Another thing that we may be able to do, again, is just change the angle a little so that we're not getting quite the same direction of push and pull. We're distributing it in different places around the design. And just for fun, because we're awkward like that, let's give ourselves some bigger problems. Let's pop this back the way it was and now let's add in some extra long stitches by altering the settings at the moment we have a stitch length of 450 so let's knock that up to 5 and we've got a density here of 0.39 which is really really tight certainly on uh, my machine it is this one here again 0.39 stitch length of 4.5 now when you have a long stitch obviously it's going to yank in a little tighter because it's not got the penetration points pushing it out to the sides so we're setting up quite a storm here and we've got rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of stitches so that's pumping in there and let's now give it a bigger problem and let's put a curve on it let's put some Florentine in there and in fact let's turn the curve the other way so that get some good pull really good pulling in on this way here as it's filling into this space and that's a perfect recipe for a lovely little mound in the middle here